video we're going to have a quick look through the risks involved in investing in bonds. We're going to look at all the various types. This is not to scare you off investing in bonds. It's just to help you behave a little bit more rationally and understand what's going on with your investment. We'll start by looking at default risk, which is by far the biggest risk with bonds. Default is a very bad thing for your investment. This is what happens when a company can't pay you back. You know, a bond, when you buy it, the company will pay you interest and then at the end of the term will buy back the bond. When a company defaults, it can't do that. You would say it's gone bust. This means that you could lose up to your whole investment and the interest payments will be stopped. The company simply does not have the money to pay you. Um, you can get some of your money back because they'll usually wind up the company, sell off its equipment, sell off its plant and so on and hopefully there'll be some money left for you but there's no guarantee that you'll get anything and it depends on the rank of your bond. If you've got subordinated bonds you're less likely to get anything. You've got a smaller claim where if you've got asset backed bonds you will get whatever that asset is worth and you should just know that bonds are not insured by the government. If someone uh, defaults, the government is not going to come in and sort you out like they would had you put money in the bank. So bonds are more risky than putting money in the bank. You've got interest rate risk, uh, bond prices move according to interest rates, so if interest rates go up, bonds go down in value. Um, however, you still get your interest even though the bond's gone down in value. The par value is unchanged and you'll get the same paid back when the bond is bought at the end of its term. So really the interest rates haven't changed your investment other than moved the price down. But if you hold on to it for long enough, the interest rate risk isn't that much of a problem. We've got liquidity risk. Uh, this isn't really much of a problem if you're a s small investor. Liquidity talks about how easy it is to buy or sell something. Uh, usually it's talked about in terms of selling. So you can get trading can be suspended temporarily. Uh, I, if I remember correctly this happened to Standard Life where you couldn't buy or sell bonds for a period of time. The stock exchange just stopped people from trading. Uh, and if you own quite a number of bonds in a small value and you want to sell out very quickly, when you add up all of the commissions you're going to have to pay and fees, it can make it uneconomical. So that can be a sort of liquidity risk. You've got a callability risk because some bonds can be called, which means the company can buy them back at any time or on a specific date you have to read the document coming with the bond uh, and the risk is that they can be bought back for more than you pay for them. If the bond market was very high when you bought in and you bought it way above the par value they could buy it back at a significant discount so you would lose money that way. However bonds that are callable usually come with a risk premium that is the callability is priced into the bond. Um, if you had two identical bonds in every respect apart from one was callable and the other wasn't the non-callable bond would be slightly more expensive when it's trading on the open market You've got political risk um, this is mainly applied to government bonds if there's big problems in a country that can affect the price of their bonds um, the laws can come in which can cause more companies to default they can change regulations which attack um, the company that issued the bonds makes it harder for them to make a profit and if they're not making a profit it's going to be harder to pay you. You have to think about things like stimulus and QE where the government is buying lots and lots of bonds and if that stops the yields on bonds are going to go up, the price is going to go down. You have to always be mindful of that. Uh, inflationary risk, you've, every year apart from when you've got deflation, usually um, prices of things are slowly moving up so if you're not getting enough in return your money will lose value um, government bonds can occasionally trade below the rate of inflation in terms of yield 
So your spending power will be eroded over time and your rate of return is negative. You're investing and not getting anything back. So you want to be earning more than the rate of inflation. So the benchmark number is about 2%. If you're earning less than 2%, you're going to have problems with inflation. Underperformance. Bonds have a low anticipated rate of return. So you don't expect to be earning 20% a year like Buffett does. If you're buying only bonds, it's very, very, very difficult to buy and hold bonds and get 20%, if not impossible. And stocks outperform bonds. If you look at various 10-year periods like uh, the guy that wrote the book Stocks for the Long Run, you find the stocks significantly outperform bonds. So if you've got a long time horizon, you should definitely be overweight in bond, uh, underweight in bonds rather, overweight in stocks. And you should look at bond prices the other way as well and realize that when they're bought back, you get your capital back. So even if the price goes down, you've still got that safety net when it's bought back in the future. Um, if you are lucky enough to be able to buy it under par, you'll be able to get even more money when it's bought back. You'll get a profit that way as well. And regardless of what the price is, unless the uh, payments have been suspended, it's defaulted and the price is really, really low, um, even if the price drops from, say, £100 to £80, you'll still get the same coupon. So your investment is exactly the same as it was when you bought it. However, the conditions in the economy have changed. Um, so that helps you be a bit more philosophical about volatility. Prices go up and down, but if you're still getting your income and you're still happy with the company that issued the bond and you still think it's going to be bought back, then your rationale for investing hasn't changed, so you shouldn't be wildly concerned or worried about it. Just remain calm and think rationally and you'll do all right.